welcome my name is Dr. Steve Young in this video I want to discuss one of my biggest pet peeves which is proper biomechanics and exercise technique so one of the things I've noticed in the last two decades of being in the fitness field is that um, the number of exercises have exploded you know when I was lifting back in the day and younger they were just simple your typical bodybuilding exercises right so your typical squats deadlifts bench shoulder press side laterals lunges and, and things like that then we sort of evolved into this uh, movement of kettlebell workouts again it's an age-old system that's been around for a long time that's um, been um, exploded in popularity and then more recently we have your boot camp um, crossfit type of workouts and now one of the problems with this um, phenomenon is that some of these exercises people are literally creating that day right so um, for example, like squats, squats have been around for a long time and I've been reading squat research and biomechanic research on proper lifting techniques for um, 15 years now. And with squats, you know, they've looked at the proper way to have proper spinal alignment, the right way to shift. You know, what happens if you do this? You know, emphasis here, what happens here? You know, what happens if you do a wall squat, you have shearing forces, your knee actually rubs this way, which is horrendous for your knees. Never do you know, you're back on a wall and slide up and down, very bad for your knees. Um, hack squat, same thing, if you do a hack squat machine, similar biomechanics of the wall squat, very bad for your knees. Instead of just hinging, the knee actually wants to slide. You have overactivation of your quads versus your hamstrings. Um, if you squat with your rounded back, right? If you were in the gym, let's say you're a fitness professional, and you see someone squat like this, right? They're kind of squatting all over the place. You would, be, you would cringe, you were like, oh, that is, that is horrendous form. I, I really should help that person. Now, what if you're looking at an exercise you've never seen before? You wouldn't even know what's right or wrong. You wouldn't even know the right technique, right? So let's say, for example, let's say if I'm on a, on a floor and I'm planking like this, and let's say I'm doing some plank walks, right? So let's say I'm going forward and back. Let's say I have a dumbbell in my hands and I'm forward back and now I'm kind of doing rows, right? Very popular workout. What's, what's the right technique and what's the wrong technique? What's, what's harmful for your body versus what's proper for your body? So I'm gonna break that down today, right? So when you're doing a plank, we can look at numbers. We do know from some of McGill's research, if you're just doing a forward plank, you're looking at 800 plus pounds of pressure. So that's like, two NFL linemen standing on your spine. That's how much pressure is going through your spine. So you, you want to be pretty careful. If you're sort of on the floor, you know, doing a plank like this, and you're going to want to do a walk, you better make sure your back is not twisting, right? Because if you're uh, compressing of 800 some pounds of pressure, and with every step your body is doing this, you are grinding your lower back in your spine. Okay, so proper technique would be stabilizing no spine movement versus having your spine rotate like this, right? And that's just looking at the lumbar spine. We want to look at the shoulder blades. What are the shoulder blades doing? Are your shoulder blades winging? Do your shoulder blades come off? Are your shoulder blades even? Do your shoulder blades tilt forward? Because if they do, you get what's called impingement, where the acromion or the bone right here in the shoulder blade touches the actual shoulder joint and you get um, pinching of soft tissues, okay? So how your shoulder blades position, how your back is positioned, all play a big role in health of these exercises. So when you look at exercise, it's very important for you, if you're a fitness professional, to understand the proper biomechanics, the physics of it, to be able to see the lines of communication between uh, one joint versus another joint. It's extremely important to understand the biomechanics, because if you don't, what ends up happening is you're just trying to remember one exercise to another in terms of what they work, what muscles are even worse, you don't even care about what muscles, you just burn calories. What you really need to understand is what forces are going through each joint. Because if you don't understand those forces, then you have no idea what you're doing to your clients. And I can tell you from lecturing across the country, uh, I mean, I, I started doing that in 1999, across the country to trainers, that a lot of exercises that you're prescribing are not healthy for your clients. Now, they may not hurt that day, that week, maybe even that year, but grinding your spine with 800 pounds of pressure and doing this repeatedly, over the years I've seen it in my clinic,
degeneration. You know, I've seen 30-year-olds with severe back problems from working out with improper movement mechanics. So as you're training your clients, your number one goal, sure, you want to burn calories and get them in shape. Your number two goal is you should be doing that carefully. You have the power to harm that person. You want to do it carefully with movements that do not hurt that person. So I urge you to do your research, to read proper biomechanics. Don't watch videos online. While this is on a website, don't get your information from a website. I've um, been in too many blogs and seen too many bad pieces of information uh, online. Get good textbooks, proper textbooks from respected published authors. People like Zatsiorski, uh, Bampa, I mean people who have been in the strength conditioning biomechanics world for a long time who know what they're doing. Read their materials, please, and understand 